Okay, welcome to uh, the first lecture here with President's Dilemma, um, Economic Indicators. And I know some of the keynotes that you have done or will do don't really connect to this, but um, th this is the final project that you'll need to know the information. The things on the taxes will help, but not as exactly uh, essential as what you will find with this information here. All right. In the economy, we have three economic goals. The first one is we want everybody who have a job, that wants a job to have one. And the way we measure this is the unemployment rate. The second goal would be we want stable prices. We don't want prices to go up too quickly, and we don't want prices to go down at all. Deflation would be a very, very bad thing, and we will talk about that here in just a little bit. Third one is a growing economy. We want to produce and products this year. Then economy, and we measure that by the gross domestic. Idea a big. And if you have more money in circulation, and in fact, I'm going to add that right here, um, and the government can control how much money is in circulation. And how do they do that? Well, in general, we dive into these more later on, but to get more money in circulation, so more money in my pocket, more money in your pocket, they could lower taxes, they could lower interest rates, and when they lower interest rates, that makes it cheaper to borrow money. So you're more likely to go borrow money to buy a house or to buy a car or go to college. So that also increases the amount of money in circulation. And then the, the hardest one for students to typically understand is they could buy back government bonds, bills, and notes. And um, you know, they sell a bond or a bill or a note 10 years ago, and then to, to say me or you, well, then here it is today, and you or I need to cash that in. Well, when the government buys that back, they are taking that bond or that bill or that note, that piece of paper, out of my hands, and they're putting cash in it when they buy it back. So that is increasing the amount of money in circulation. And again, we dive into that more, even more detail and a greater level of understanding a little bit later on. And then the newest one is what they call quantitative easing, which is uh, something we'll dive into a little bit later. But it's a relatively new thing that uh, the federal government has done, the Federal Reserve has done. And the results, whenever you do this, would be more jobs because there's more money. So you and I go buy more, more stuff, more goods, more services. And so therefore, those businesses have to hire people. And if they increase the amount of money in circulation, we should also see economic growth, which is a good thing. But the bad thing is when there's more money in circulation, prices go higher. Uh, the more money there is, uh, the more money there is chasing goods. So therefore, that right... Uh, drives the prices up. So you need to realize that more money in circulation helps unemployment, helps economic growth, but it harms prices. And then if they do things to take money out of circulation, just the opposite is the effect. Here's the result. Um, they could raise taxes. That takes money out of circulation, takes money out of my hands, and puts it in the government's hands. And if they don't spend it, that's lowering the amount of money in circulation. They could raise interest rates. Um, they could sell government bonds. So they would sell me a, 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 a a United States savings bond. Maybe some of you have a savings bond that grandma or grandpa bought you when you were born. Um, so when they sold that to your grandma, your grandma gave them cash. And they took that cash and let's say they shredded it. Well, that would reduce the amount of money in circulation. Um, and then there would they would could stop what we call quantitative, quantitative easing. And again, I'll explain that more um, later on. Uh, the results, if they took money out of circulation would be fewer jobs available because we wouldn't have as much money to spend to buy goods and services. Uh, it would slow down the, the economy, but it would bring prices under control. So these items are kind of on a, on a teeter-totter, if you will. On one side, you help them out. You make these two good, the fewer new jobs, and uh, or you create jobs and you create growth by putting money in circulation, but you're harming prices if you do that. So they have to walk that uh, fine line constantly. All right, well, how do we measure how our economy is doing? Well, the first one we're going to talk about is gross domestic product, and uh, which is commonly called GDP. And gross domestic product is the value of all goods and services produced within a country within a given time period. So it's not just um, Big Macs and cheeseburgers and chairs and and widgets, it's also services like haircuts, lawyer fees, accountants, those types of things. So that's gross domestic product. Now, 
often when you look these things up, you will see uh, gross domestic product as nominal and you will see real GDP. And just an explanation as to the difference between the two, um, real is adjusted for inflation. So as an example, let's say this year I produce um, five um, tape dispensers and sell those for $10 each. So I've got five scotch tape dispensers and I sell those for $10 each. Well, my gross domestic product would have been $50. Five times 10 is 50. Well, let's say next year the, there's, uh, the price of these has gone up and I can sell them for $12. Well, and I produce five again. I didn't really produce more next year than I did this year. So the, the real GDP would stay the same. $50. The nominal GDP would go up because 12 times 5 is 50, uh, or I'm sorry, is 60. So um, nominal is not adjusted for inflation. It's, it's the value I'm actually able to sell these for, and the real would be adjusted for inflation. So real is actually a little bit better, better measurement of the economy. And you can see down here, I have some numbers. These are as of 2013, um, or actually these are 2012 numbers, I guess. Actually, I'm putting this together in 2013. In the United States, our GDP, actual GDP right now is $14.9 trillion. So if you put together all the goods and services in the United States that were produced, you would come up with almost $15 trillion for 2012. In China, they produced $7.3 trillion worth of goods and services in the same year. Now, however, the big difference is how many people we have. We have 313 million. China has 1.3 billion people. So everybody talks about, oh, China's going to take us over as an economy and all that stuff, and who knows, maybe they will. But when you divide it out per person, they're not even in the ballpark of the United States. Heck, they're hardly, they're not even half. They don't produce half as much, um, as many goods and services value-wise as what we do, not even half. But um, And they have, what, four times the population, something like that? So they're not even close to having the economy that the United States does. Now, when you divide that out per person, when you take this $14.9 trillion and divide it by the $313 million, that means we produce about $48,000 worth of goods and services per person per year here in the United States. And we're about fifth in the, in the world. There are some countries that do better than us. So our per capita or per person GDP is $48,000 a year. You can see in China, they are still very, very poor. They only produce a little over $5,000 worth of goods and services per person per, um, per year. So it's growing very rapidly. Theirs is growing much more quickly than ours is, but they still have a long, long way to go to match our wealth. All right. Now our goal for uh, gross domestic product is 3% growth. So next year, we would like for this per capita to go up 3%. So we would like that to go up about $1,500 per person. Or we would like this to go up 3%, which is, uh, what, uh, 300 billion, about $450 billion uh, for next year. If, if we are growing at 3%, that is good as far as economic growth goes. All right, our next economic indicator is the consumer price index. And the consumer price index is computed by... Um, averaging together all kinds of different products at all kinds of different places throughout the United States. And what they did was they measured these products, the value, how much they were being sold for back in 1982. So they went out and saw how much they could buy for $100 basically in 1982. Well, to buy those exact same products today, a loaf of bread, a gallon of milk, a uh, reclining chair, a gallon of gas, I have no idea what all products they use, in different parts of the United States, it would cost you $232 to buy the exact same products as what it did back in 1982. So we say our CPI today is 232 They don't put a dollar sign in front of it, but that's basically what it means. All right. So that is how we measure the value or the price is going up or going down in a country is based on 1982 numbers. Now, we would like for prices to go up at 2 to 3% per year. As you can imagine, the government can't just automatically make prices go up or automatically make prices go down. So what they do is, and they don't want prices to go down. Prices going down would be a disaster to the economy. Deflation would be bad. Because if you always had this feeling that, oh, it's going to be cheaper next week, I'll wait to buy it, you would hold on to your money and you wouldn't go spend it. 
Well, we always want that fear that, oh, I better buy it now because next week it'll be more expensive. So we always want that fear that prices are going to be higher in all of our in all of our brains and all of our instincts. So to, so that we have a little bit of cushion, the goal of the government is an increase in prices of somewhere between two to three percent per year. So if prices are growing up two to three percent year per year, we're in good shape and we like that. All right. Um, next is um, unemployment. All right. Um, unemployment is measured as people over the age of 18 who want a full-time job but can't find one. We say they are unemployed. Well, our goal for unemployment is 4%. The reason why it is not... Um, Lindsay Hall. The reason why... Sorry about that. The reason why it um, can't go to zero or less, much less than 4% is somebody's always in between jobs. Somebody always works for a business that is run poorly and closes down and they have to find a new job. Um, somebody's always going back to get more training. Um, somebody has a, a, uh, a loved one maybe that's ill and can't work or doesn't have the desire to work, whatever. Um, well, that would, they wouldn't count, I guess. But uh, we generally consider 4% unemployment as being... Um, about the best we can do. So 4% unemployment is our goal. Anything above that, we are going to try to bring that down. All right, next we um, have the debt. And this is not a, a tool, but you need to know about the debt. Um, debt is typically a bad thing. Um, overall, general feeling is debt's bad because you have to pay interest on that debt. And just like your personal household, every dollar you put towards debt is one less dollar you can spend on building a road or building a bridge or employing a person. So the opportunity cost of that debt is, uh, is substantial. And so therefore, we don't like to increase our debt and we like to see our debt going down. Now, as you probably are aware our um, our debt is uh, is very very high right now and I've got this here we go um, so now you see up here the US national debt um, 16.8 trillion dollars and going up um, the debt per taxpayer debt per uh, federal budget deficit so this is how much more we have spent this year than what we brought in this year so here we go together in what April all of this information. Shoot me a, an email, ask me what some of these numbers might mean. Some of them, I, most of them I know, some of them I may not have a clue. So um, yeah, it's a pretty interesting uh, website there. All right, so now let's head back to, um, let's head back to where we were. I'm going to close that out and open back, uh, open our PowerPoint back up. So there's the debt on the government. And what about taxes? Well, and your keynotes. Well, use Google to help you. Ask me. Um, you can go to your textbook if you need information on that. Um, you can look around to find that information. But for the most part, using Google will help you with uh, with those Q notes. And you need to know that information. But it's not going to be all that essential as far as the president's dilemma goes. And if you have any questions, as always, you can... Uh, you can email me at uh, cloudfilterp at centergrove.k12.in.us or you can uh, text me or, or whatever uh, works best for you if you have my number. All right, thanks.